Hi guys, welcome back to Prophecy Unfolding. It's good to be with you. The final generation. In Matthew 24, Jesus spoke some amazing prophecies of what's to come. And one in particular that I will focus on today is what we would call the parable of the fig tree. We have to learn a lesson from this. It's something that was spoke highly and something that really Christ promised us what was actually going to happen. And when we look at the fig tree, we know that when the figs are tender and the leaves come out, we know that summer is near. Even so, when we see all these things happen, we know it's near, even at the door. Truly, I tell you, that this generation will not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Five signs that we are truly the last and final generation. Christ gave us a guide of how things will unfold. Not only that, he told us things to look out for in order to keep guidance of the timeline. Are we truly the generation? And these are the five signs that we should be looking out for. 2020 is the year we're seeing it all unfold together. Sign number one, deception. Christ specifically gave us guidance on this when the apostles asked him about his return. And Jesus turned around and said to the disciples, many will come, many false prophets claim that I am the Messiah and will deceive many. It's a, it's a strong, strong scripture. And deception comes in a variety of forms. And we see today there are many false prophets even within our own circles of, of Christianity, we can see there's many people who claim to be one thing, but really are another. In other words, we have many, many who are wolves in sheep's clothing. And to deceive people by counterfeiting the gospel, which Christ has given us, to distract them and pull them away from the originality of the gospel to save people. We see many false prophets. We see them all over both within Christianity and outside of Christianity. Many people claiming to be the Messiah, cults, people following them. These are the deceptions that are happening so strongly today, which is pulling people away from the true gospel of Christ. Sign number two, wars, rumors of wars, lawlessness. I'm kind of combining all of these together. 2020 is the year of lawlessness. We're seeing now more than ever not only am I talking in terms of army or country against country, Jesus specifically told us there would be wars and rumours of wars, but don't be afraid, the end is not to come. And straight after that, he said that there will be kingdom against kingdom or nation against nation. Some people would say ethnic group against ethnic group, which today is happening. We see in the US, it's almost going to be civil war. You can feel the tension. They've used race against race because they want chaos. This is a sign that Christ specifically told us to be looking out for. We can see China against the US. We can see Iran against the US. Russia against the US. Israel with all the armies and countries around it. War is imminent, folks. Wars always happen. Yes, they've been happening for hundreds of years, but it's all accumulating together. And I say this with a strong sense of urgency. I gave it the force of deception has happened. Wars, rumours of wars, lawlessness on the streets, violence on the streets, which has now become acceptable because they have a certain kind of agenda behind it. They think it's okay to be violent towards each other in order to get their point across. But this is all signs of the return of Christ. Sign number three. We see 2020 is full of what is actually happening. We have the locusts and plagues, which has flooded the world over. 2020 is the year I'm focusing on and straight away what's probably going to come to mind is COVID and how it shut the whole world down. Regardless of our views on it, people are dying around the world from viruses and sicknesses all over. People are getting seriously ill. Also with that we see locusts travelling all over the globe killing crops which also cause famine. People are dying all over. It's happening everywhere. It's actually come to a stage now where it's undeniable to see, even with the last trade that I've given now, it's all coming together and it's happening at the same time. 
there's all types of plagues. We're getting word of the black plague starting to raise its head again, which was one of the big killers. We know that we are in a time period that's spoken of through many prophets, and then Christ himself gave us these warnings, like birth pains where they all happen together, they contract together, they get stronger with more intensity. All we have to look to, to do is switch on your TV and you'll see the news, the normal news, other than the COVID, you'll see all types of natural disasters happening around the world, whether it be tsunamis, whether it be earthquakes, whether it be wildfires in Australia and the US, many, many animals that died, many kind of plants and trees become inhabitable areas. It is happening at a super fast rate. It's exciting to see these things happen as a believer in Christ because we know our soon Messiah is coming. But it's also to make us aware that these signs are real, they were spoken of, and they are happening now. Sign number four. The love of many growing cold because of the increased wickedness and sin. It's another sign that Christ gives us. You know, that we're living in a time period and a time frame where people have been handed over and persecuted because of our faith. I'm lucky enough to be born on this side of the world where we don't actually see a huge amount of them. But when we look at our brothers and sisters in China and some of the other countries around the Middle East that have been killed and tormented and persecuted because of their faith in Jesus Christ. And he warned us of this. He says that the world will hate us because they hated him first. When he talks about the increased sin and the love of many grown cold, the warning for me when I hear him saying this is within Christianity and within the church. And we see that it's happening. A great falling away from the faith is happening. As we speak, more and more churches are starting to emerge like the world. They accept sin like it's normal, like it should be there. These are the things that Christ spoke about. These are the signs which accumulate to one final push before he comes. Guys, I really want to point out, the signs are simple. He didn't make it hard. If you look around, we could see it happening. Again, when you look through the signs, all the way up to this one, it's actually all happening at the same time. This is not something that happened 50 years ago for one and 100 years ago for another. 2020 has shown us that all these signs are happening together. The scariest part is to see how far the church has strayed away from the gospel. The emerging church is more focused on how good we should feel inside rather than getting people to Christ. That it's okay to sin as long as we come on a Sunday morning to church. These are the signs. This is happening in 2020. Sign number five. One of the last and final signs Christ told his disciples when they were up there, and again, I say when he was asking about when he's going to return, a lot of signs. Um, and we see all the devastation and what's going to happen in the world. But one specific thing which stands out to me is he said that the gospel would be preached in all the world and then the end would come. Regardless on our views on what the end looks like, tribulation period, who's going to be here and who's not. The gospel has and is at this moment being preached all over the world. I'm speaking to people in Australia, the US, South Africa, all over the world in this instant, in this second, the gospel has been preached everywhere. I've come to a point in my own life where I, I have to admit that not everybody is going to accept the gospel. Sometimes we look at this message where the gospel is preached that everyone's going to be saved. That's not what Christ said. We preach the gospel, we sow the seed, let the Spirit do what he has to do and that those who will be saved will be saved. But it's happening today. We have the internet, we have social media sites. The internet is helping us spread the gospel. Yes, there's many bads to it, but we're using this tool to spread the gospel. These are the signs that Christ has spoken about. These five signs, and there's many more, the five signs are accumulating together, they're happening together, more intensity, more frequent, just like birth pangs, which Christ told us, like labor for a woman, as she gets closer to giving birth, they become more intense, they become tighter and faster, and closer together, the closer she gets to giving birth to her child. This is the final generation, guys. I truly believe what Christ told us. You know, it's like looking at the seasons and 
gave us the, the parable of the fig tree again, I reiterate, we see the leaves, we see that summer is approaching. We can always tell what's happening by what's going on in the sky. And yet he told us when we see all these signs occurring, we know that the time is near, even at the door. And he was serious in telling people this. We are now in the generation where we will soon see Christ coming back to rule and reign. Now is the time for salvation. Don't wait for tomorrow or next year. Now is the time to see Christ. Now is the time to find our Saviour. Right guys, as we've seen, we went through the signs and we could have been here for hours going through the many prophecies which Christ spoke about. But I felt that these five are hard pinpointers and we could see and look from January 2020 to, to now, all of these things have been happening. This is not to scare people. It's not fear mongering. Christ wasn't a fear monger when he was telling um, the apostles this, but he was making people aware. Look out for the signs. We do it when it comes to the weather, the normal weather. Yes, as believers, our duty is to be looking out for Christ's return. We live our life and occupy and do our jobs and do the things we have to do. But essentially, for me personally speaking, I'm looking forward to the day that Christ rules and reigns. And no more do we have the corruption and the evil in the world and sin which is in full control at the moment, a full swing. We are called to be the light in the darkness and the salt in the world. To anyone who's watching, who's never heard the message of salvation, it's not complicated or rocket science. Christ came, he died, he went to the grave and rose again for your salvation. And if you were the only person who was in need of that salvation for him to die, he would do it just for you. We come to a place and we realize that sin is what holds us back from our relationship and our savior. But Christ came to pave that way that we have a way to the Father. The curtain was torn in two so that we have a way to the throne. Salvation is not far away, guys. It's right here today. You recognize Christ as your savior, that he did die for you. And you believe that he died for you and rose again so that your salvation is in him and him alone. It's such a beautiful message. With everything we speak of, it's, as I say, it's not to scare you or to get you to hide, but to give you hope. Now more than ever, the Bible is true. Prophecy is happening before our eyes. It's, it's intellectually dishonest to look around, see what's happening and saying the Bible never spoke of them. All of them are happening at the same time. And I'm happy to say that Christ is coming soon, that we're in a position that we are the generation to see it happening. And I can see more and more young people who are looking for an answer in the world, but you will never find it in your government. You will never find it on TV or in your social media. The only answer to life is in Christ and Christ alone. It's an exciting journey when you give your life to Christ when you become part of the family, knowing you're saved by him alone. Yes, there's trials, there's tribulations, and there's times of persecution, but ultimately the goal is to spend eternity with him, that your corruptible is gone, and you become incorruptible through Christ and through Christ alone. Exciting times we live in, guys. The signs are all around us. Don't ignore them. Don't put your head in the sand as if it's not happening. Be aware of your surroundings and what's happening, and know that the time is drawing. Yeah. It's good to be with you. It's good here sharing the gospel with you. It's a new type of um, video that I'm doing today compared to the normal ones, but I just wanted to get the message across strongly. You know, you come up against so much contention when we say Jesus is coming. So I wanted to give you the pinpointers on why we believe, why we believe he's coming and why that we're the kind of the final generation, the generation spoken of, the generation of the fig tree. Again, Christ is there, he's knocking on your heart. And there's people here who've never really heard the message. Even as I'm speaking, you can feel it tugging at your heart. Spend time with him when this is finished. Sit at the side of your bed and pray that prayer and ask Christ into your heart. And ask him to show himself to you and he will. He will come to those who look for him, who are knocking and seeking. And we're told this in scripture as well. Guys, exciting times we live in. I love you. Remember, a slogan that will probably come up with on t-shirts, God is always in control and keep the faith.